Good morning, September 26th. The myrtle trees that were in the bottom. Zechariah 1.8 The vision in this chapter describes the condition of Israel in Zechariah's day. But being interpreted in its aspect toward us, it describes the church of God as we find it now in the world. The church is compared to a myrtle grove flourishing in a valley. It is hidden, unobserved, secreted, courting no honor and attracting no observation from the careless gazer. The church, like her head, has a glory, but it is concealed from carnal eyes. For the time of her breaking forth in all her splendor is not yet come. The idea of tranquil security is also suggested to us, for the myrtle grove in the valley is still and calm, while the storm sweeps sweeps over the mountain summits. Tempests spend their force upon the craggy peaks of the Alps, but down yonder, where flows the stream which maketh glad the city of our God, The myrtles flourish by the still waters, all unshaken by the impetuous wind. How great is the inward tranquility of God's church! Even when opposed and persecuted, she has a peace which the world gives not, and which, therefore, it cannot take away. The peace of God which passeth all understanding keeps the hearts and minds of God's people. Does not the metaphor forcibly picture the peaceful, perpetual growth of the saints? The myrtle sheds not her leaves, she is always green, and the church, in her worst time, still hath a blessed verdure of grace about her. Nay, she has sometimes exhibited most verdure when her winter has been sharpest. She has prospered most, when her adversities have been most severe. Hence the text hints at victory. The myrtle is the emblem of peace and a significant token of triumph. The brows of conquerors were bound with myrtle and with laurel. And is not the church ever victorious? Is not every Christian more than a conqueror through him that loved him? Living in peace, Do not the saints fall asleep in the arms of victory. September 26th. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Psalm 90, verse 12. Every day is a little life, and our whole life is but a day repeated. Whence it is that old Jacob numbers his life by days, and Moses desires to be taught this point of holy arithmetic, to number not his years, but his days. Those, therefore, that dare lose a day are dangerously prodigal, but those that dare misspend it, desperate. By Bishop Hall September 26th. One leak will sink a ship, and one sin will destroy a sinner. Evening, September 26th. Hal, fir tree, for the cedar is fallen. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 2. When in the forest there is heard the crash of a falling oak, It is a sign that the woodman is abroad, and every tree in the whole company may tremble lest tomorrow the sharp edge of the axe should find it out. We are all like trees marked for the axe, and the fall of one should remind us that for everyone, whether great as the cedar or humble as the fir, the appointed hour is stealing on apace. I trust we do not, by often hearing of death,
become callous to it. May we never be like the birds in the steeple which build their nests when the bells are tolling and sleep quietly when the solemn funeral peals are startling the air. May we regard death as the most weighty of all events and be sobered by its approach. It ill behooves us to sport while our eternal destiny hangs on a thread. The sword is out of its scabbard. Let us not trifle. It is furbished, and the edge is sharp. Let us not play with it. He who does not prepare for death is more than an ordinary fool. He is a madman. When the voice of God is heard among the trees of the garden, let fig tree and sycamore and elm and cedar alike hear the sound thereof. Be ready, servant of Christ, for the Master comes on a sudden. When an ungodly world least expects him, see to it that thou be faithful in his work, for the grave shall soon be digged for thee. Be ready, parents, see that your children are brought up in the fear of God, for they must soon be orphans. Be ready, men of business, take care that your affairs are correct, and that you serve God with all your hearts, for the days of your terrestrial service will soon be ended, and you will be called to give account for the deeds done in the body whether they be good or whether they be evil. May we all prepare for the tribunal of the great king with a care which shall be rewarded with the gracious commendation, Well done, good and faithful servant.